Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. Happy New Year, everyone. I uh, hope you had a lovely holiday. You know, my husband always teases me because I tell him my favorite part of the holiday is dragging the Christmas tree out to the curb after New Year's Day. I exaggerate a little bit. It's not my favorite time, but I do um, like that part of the ritual as well because it symbolizes a fresh start. And nothing else symbolizes a fresh start better than going to my local secondhand bookstore and buying a bunch of horror paperbacks. So I re really went a little crazy this time. So let me share with you what I got. This first one is a vampire story called Night Prayers by P.D. Kasich. Don't know if I'm saying the last name right. This is a 2005 leisure book, so it's a little on the newer side. A gorgeous confection, blood pudding whipped to a tasty scarlet froth. Mm. She's fallen for a lot of lines in her time, but she's never had a morning after like this one. Waking up alone in a seedy LA motel, dumped again, and suddenly one of the undead. Seth had promised her that things would be different. Then he sucked her dry and left her without so much of a training manual. But survival is more of a long shot than ever once Allison gets on the bad side of a catty coven of exotic dancers. All of them vengeful vampires. This sounds amazing. I am going to put this at the top of the list. Okay, next we have uh, Dean Koontz, The Mask. Now, I was looking for some early Dean Koontz. They did have some of his uh, earliest novels, but they were so beat up, I just I didn't want to buy them. They were just like disintegrating, like I couldn't even read them without the pages falling out. And the reason I'm looking for some Dean Koontz is I read a, a, a book about how to write popular fiction that just recently, just last week, and I'm going to be doing a video about that soon um, on my author tube, which is part of this channel. But this is called The Mask. Now, I know Dean Koontz is extremely prolific. I've, uh, you know, I've read a couple of his books, but I never read this one. This came out in uh, 1981. So this is an early 80s. Uh, you know, I'll check this one out. Here's another Dean Koontz. I, I was intrigued by this one, and, and these two look nice together because they're both the same size, both purplish tinged, if my light doesn't keep reflecting them. This is called The Fun House. Uh, I'm really interested in fun house horror, so I'm looking forward to this one. It has a pretty cool metallic cover. This one came out in 1980, The Fun House. Here's another Dean Koontz published in 1990. You can kind of tell how popular he became because there's like page after page after page of uh, reviews in the front. But uh, this is called The Bad Place. And uh, yeah, I'm just sort of like picking up some Dean Koontz and kind of getting back into him. This is called There He Keeps Them Very Well. A take on an old nursery rhyme that's always been a little creepy. Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, right? This um, falls into that category of like the scary family. And if you look in the die cut, it has the, the house. I'll do a close up. When you turn, that is like the most miserable looking bunch of people you've ever seen in your life. It's kind of like a V.C. Andrews, uh, John Saul kind of feel to it. Where are my children? Christine Wander is living every woman's worst nightmare. When she left her home one ordinary morning, all was well. Now her husband has been murdered and the children stolen. The police have few clues. There is no ransom demand. Chris feels her sanity slipping under the daily barrage of reporters shouted questions. I actually have a couple from this author, Claire McNally. This looks just from the close. It looks like it was from the 90s. So let's see, 1994. Next is another Claire McNally, and I love this cover. This is a, a, along the same lines, a, the same kind of theme. Only now we have a little girl in, trapped inside a greenhouse. And then when you open it up, she's sitting in a chair. Uh, this, this is very reminiscent of a book that I, I have called Billy over there that I haven't started reading yet. So this is another Claire McNally. Blood is thicker than water. She's found her long lost family. Can she survive the reunion? All her life, Grace has wondered about her real mother, the woman who gave her up for adoption when Grace was, was but a few hours old. Now married with children of her own, Grace still seeks to fill the emptiness of her past. And it goes on from there. This again is Mc, uh, Claire McNally, 1997. Okay, so 90s, and this one's in really nice shape. So in uh, continu continuing with kind of the creepy kid theme, we have another uh, book by Claire McNally called Ghost Light. This came out in 1982, so this one's older. It has a photograph of a girl like in flames. 
In the blood of the innocent burns the name of evil. Until the night she found herself wandering, terrified through the darkness of the Winston Theater, a night that could end with evil consuming the innocent girl in a horrible, fiery death. Okay. This seems really interesting, uh, 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 just because I love horror mixed with theater, so that might come move to the top of the stack. Here's another creepy mommy book. Um, mommy, just mommy, in creepy font by Max Allen Collins. The inspiration for the cult movie. Does anyone know about this cult movie? Now I'm intrigued. Taught, suspenseful, and laced with Hitchcockian humor. John Lutz, author of Single White Female. Meet Mommy. She's pretty, she's perfect, she's June Cleaver with a cleaver. God, I love that. And you don't want to deny her or her daughter anything because she only wants what's best for her little girl and she's not about to let anyone get in her way. And if that means killing a few people, well, isn't that what mommies are for? And the New York Times book review, Mr. Collins has an outwardly artless style that conceals a great deal of art. That's an interesting review. You know, this is already making me think, like back in the day there was a, a mother who like killed her cheerleader daughter's rival or something, you know, that, con that level of commitment. So let's see, what, this was a leisure book, 1997. So I got a few 90s books. This one's called Rocking the Cradle by Nancy Baker Jacobs. She wanted her baby more than anything, but she wasn't the only one. So I, I don't know this author, Nancy Baker Jacobs. This came out in 1996. I have a few that I, I went into the um, sci-fi fantasy section. And I'm really looking to get into some old school science fiction, fantasy, not YA, just like, I don't know, like swords and sorcery kind of thing. So one of the uh, books I did find in the sci-fi uh, fantasy section that I was kind of intrigued by was a novelization of that old 80s movie called Kroll. Kroll, is that how you pronounce it? I remember seeing this and... and uh, really long time ago and I remember the guy has some kind of like weird weapon that you know like a ninja star kind of thing it has a name <laughs> it's on the back uh okay this is intriguing this is by Alan Dean Foster um, adapted from the screenplay he also adapted a lot of other screenplays like Alien I read that last year this looks like fun and uh, I, I think I might check out that movie um I watched the trailer and it it looks like wonderfully cheesily great so I will check that out too. What else did I get? Uh, this, I just was like a wild card because I just was intrigued by the uh, cover and the title. Coriolanus, The Chariot by Alan Yates. Being a Shakespeare buff, I was immediately attracted to this. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. On the planet Thesbos, the word of Shakespeare is law. So I'm liking this already. I think this is really a cool concept. Through the mystery of his works, embodied in his living arcana, the power of illusion holds the eyes and mind of the entire galaxy in thrall. At the center of this web of dreams within a dream lie the Council of Five. They have given up their very selves to become the major arcana, to possess power beyond the dreams of groundlings. But the... <laughs> you gotta love it. But the latest object of their sadistic whimsy may face them with a rude awakening. If he can survive the trial through the mazes of the flesh to become Coriolanus, the chariot. Has anyone ever heard of this book? I mean, this really sounds great. I just, just reading these old descriptions, I'm getting excited. Okay, this was 1978. Ooh, I got an old one. All right, well, anything that mixes like um, sci-fi, fantasy, and Shakespeare, you know, I'm in. This sounds really cool. I'm so excited to start reading these. And the last book that I got from the bookstore is Millennium. Already, like, the typeface is really cool. In the skies over Oakland, California, a DC-10 and a 747 are about to collide. In the far distant future, a time travel team is preparing to snatch the passengers, leaving prefabricated smoking bodies behind for the rescue teams to find. That's pretty creepy. And in Washington, D.C., an air disaster investigator named Smith is about to get a phone call that will change his life. 
and end the world as we know it. Okay, this sounds like fun. I like to I always like to read like books that are set in like older books that are set in like now times where you can kind of see how wrong they get it. And um, like in 2001, I, I kind of wish that the world kind of looked like that. And like, you know, I was working as a stewardess and wearing like one of those big hats and like walking upside down, you know, just a dream. Anyway, so that is what I got at the bookstore and I went a little nuts. And I'm not really finished because I got two more books, uh, one from the uh, lovely old Amazon. This is a Disco Death Trap by Cameron Robeek. Hope I'm saying that name right. Uh, this author's making a name for himself uh, with these like kind of 80s style books. I'm very jealous. I don't know if this is self-published, but I'm jealous of, of what he was able to do here. I wanted to be able to do that with my book. I, I should have tried to get it that size. Next time I write a horror book and I'm going to be releasing one this year pretty soon. I'm going I'm downsizing because you know this is the better kind of size for that type of book and whoops anyway I'm really intrigued I know he wrote another book about like the funhouse slasher book that um, escapes me right now I'm going to write it right here I wanted to thank uh, Jason from Jason's Weird Reads uh, for recommending this. So I'll, I'll let you guys know what I think about this. And then finally, speaking of um, YA fantasy, I have a lot of YA books back there that I bought last year. I, wanted, I did a little uh, talk about that in my end of the year, um, I don't know, wrap up. But um, I'm not buying any more YA books, but I happened to find this one for free in my little library down the street. So I got it. It's called Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth. I remember there was a bit of a controversy about that book. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll probably, you know, it's, it's lovely to look at. It will look lovely on my shelf. I'll probably get to it sometime. But I'm more excited about reading some of these books that I got from my haul. You know, it's funny when I go to the uh, secondhand bookstore, the horror section is kind of like relegated into a, like its own shelf that's really low and you have to get down and kind of squeeze between these two other shelves with all this um, romance to, to find it. And I was thinking, you know, the horror's always been kind of in the shadows and, and maybe that's where it belongs. So uh, yeah, so that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library and I'll see you soon.